If you are taking requests, I would love a tutorial explaining how to loop particles in particular so they would loop perfectly in a GIF or whatever. Keep up the awesome work. Let's do it. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I'm uh, answering a quest from Harry Mitchell about how to loop particles. So let's go ahead and figure it out and jump right in. All right, cool. So here's an example uh, that I was just kind of playing with. And, you know, I have some uh, depth of field and I have some particles moving into the foreground. And it's just these kind of like stringy lines uh, sort of moving out of the shadows, moving into focus towards the camera. Now loops and particles are kind of tricky because it always depends on what your particles are looking at and what sort of scene you have. So in this example, my scene, these particles are kind of uh, random, kind of complicated. So let me turn this motion blur off. And when I'm thinking of loops, I did myself a favor and I basically started on black. I know that they come from out of the darkness into the light. And over time, they're gonna go past the camera and to match black on black, all I did is, this is my particle layer. I just went ahead and faded out the last 10 frames. So we end on black, and if I hit home, we start on black. So making a loop, you know, in this example is really easy because the first and last frames match evenly and perfectly because it's just on black. It's not too complicated. And that's kind of the trick of building any loop, whether it's with particles or footage or motion graphics, is all you really need is the first frame to match and the last frame to match. So what I did is, let me close these other composition windows, is I took the build, uh, this particle build, and the loop point is simple enough to where, you know, like I said, first frame matches, last frame matches. And then I went ahead and added a little bit of color to it. a little bit of grain, let me go ahead and fit this to the screen. A little bit of grain, a little bit of noise, a little bit of glow, and um, let's go ahead and ram preview it. I'll do, let's do maybe a third resolution, and we'll just see what it looks like. All right, cool, so let's just go ahead and take a look at this, and you know, this is an easy example since, you know, it, like I keep mentioning, it's black to black, and let's see how the loop point goes. And there we go. I mean, that's that's technically a seamless loop because our first and last frame matches. But uh, let's say your particles are a little more complicated and you kind of have uh, you know a little bit of a different scene. And um, this other workaround might be what you're looking for if you're running to a solution like this. So let me go ahead and close all those tabs. And let's go and do this dust particles example. And I have a feeling this is what most people particles are gonna look like, just something random. Uh, you know, whether it's these spheres or, you know, lines or anything. Um, and let me just kind of show you how I set this up. So this is also using particular. Let me, let me open it up here. And what I have is going is just a little bit of fast blur on these and particular. And what I did is the, I do have them start on black. They have a little bit of a life and then they fade off to black. And instead of doing a black to black loop, I'll show you uh, another way to do this if you have particles moving around. Um, so yeah, those are my only keyframes in this. Um, the life of the particles is around two seconds. So yeah, life of the particles is around two seconds, a little bit of randomness on that. And let's go to make a loop out of these. So uh, this is what I would do, if, you know, especially if you have a complicated particle scene, is I would first take this and I already have a marker here because this is where I'm having my particles fade out and go to zero. And this is the number that we're kind of looking for. This number is important because that's what is gonna basically determine where we should start setting our loop point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the marker here and I'm gonna go to where our particles are zero, but I'm going to kind of just see where everything fades out back to black. All right. And so right there, I'm gonna do alt bracket to shorten up our solid. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-compose this. This will be our dust build. And I'm making sure that all the attributes go back into the new composition. All right, and then just real quick, I'm going back in. I'm setting my playhead on that marker where we know the particles end. I'm gonna jump back out and I'm gonna set a marker right here. All right, so now this is this is important because that's where you know the particles are fading out, and 
This is where it gets a little weird to make our loop point in this situation. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna move my playhead to home and I'm gonna put our marker right on top of the playhead there. So let me turn the caps lock off. And what I'm gonna do is, so we know that these two markers, if I take a screenshot and I go home, these are the exact same frame, okay? So to avoid those duplicate frames like we were talking about earlier, I'm gonna go back one frame in my composition right there, and this should be our new loop point. So let's go ahead and RAM preview this and see, um, you know, kind of how one half the animation fades out, going into our other one, but eventually still making a seamless loop. All right, cool. So in this example, you know, we got our loop going and everything's working. We might want to make the animation longer to kind of hide um, how often the loop is, maybe, you know, 10, 15 seconds. And, you know, I kind of feel like it'd be hard for people to see where that loop is, is in the middle there. So, so there we go. I mean, that's, uh, you know, those are very simple examples, but you know, I have a whole nother uh, tutorial about more loops. If you want to see some more uh, variant ways to make loops with, footage or elements or, you know, whatever you want. But uh, hey, either way, thanks for the request. I hope that helps out. Uh, subscribe if you guys want to see more. Thanks again for uh, tuning in every week, you guys. It's been a lot of fun. And as always, I will see you next week in the next tutorial. Have a good one. We 3D tracked it. We have some Z space going on and it just uh, looks pretty cool. We're going to have our beams follow it no matter where we reposition it.